done with this you know, tremendous heritage, the British theme. Thrilled to have each of you here today with us. And I'm thrilled also to join you. It was an amazing chat that you had before with the champagne and 007. So I'm very happy to be able to join. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. We're actually going to begin with you. Thrilled okay. to here. Maria. Hi guys, I, I am I am here. I'm just having a difficulty with the camera. Just me, bear with me. I'm so sorry, Maria. I'll let you answer the question first of all. No, no problem. Maria, we move over to you, Thomas, coming to us live from London. Thrilled to have you as well. Maria is originally from Argentina, having spent half of her life in the United States, where she graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree. She moved to Miami and immediately started working in real estate, one of her passions. In her role as a co-partner of a Miami real estate firm, Maria works on helping individual clients as well as institutional investors to acquire, sell, and lease properties in the commercial and residential spaces. Throughout the years, she has developed a strong relationship with the top commercial, multifamily, and residential brokers, as well as a deep network of South Florida top real estate attorneys and brokers. Maria is passionate about keeping her client's best interest at heart, focusing more on achieving long-term goals than on closing a specific transaction. In her current role at g, &G Business Developments, Maria is responsible for overseeing the sales operation of new real estate developments with a specific focus on the Aston Martin residences here in Miami. Maria, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thomas, great to see you. Hey, how are you? Always, uh, always a pleasure to have you joining us. For having me back, Thomas April. Thomas Babish coming to us from London is the founder of the boutique real estate firm Montague Real Estate and co-founder of Montague Capital, a real estate fund. He is based in Mayfair, London. A former diamond trader, Thomas's passion for architecture and property saw him establish Montague Real Estate. The firm provides quality real estate advice to the ultra high net worth community, as well as adding the fun, emotional enjoyment and rewards that come with real estate advisory. Today, Montague Real Estate is growing from strength to strength, selling luxury properties across Europe, the US, Asia, and the Middle East with plans to expand overseas next year. With a Bulgarian father and a Scottish mother, Thomas considers himself a true global citizen. When he's not facilitating deals or enjoying the best of London's restaurants with his family, Thomas can be found at Stanford Bridge cheering on his beloved Chelsea FC. Thomas, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. So let's go ahead and begin. Maria, over to you. How, how did the real estate market look at the beginning of 2020? Take us back to January. Well, back in January, actually, we, we started very good. We came with a strong push in 2019, and we were actually making record sales uh, January, February. And then March came, uh, as we all know, and the world changed. Uh, but even though with that, in May, we were able to, again, make record sales. So um, we were slow April. Uh, it was a... a when the pandemic hit, I think we all just honked down and see what was gonna happen. But slowly Miami was, uh, you could see Miami was being strong as a city regarding the pandemic and, and people um, wanting to spend time outdoors. And I think that's something that, that helped us a lot, uh, the way the city um, was able to, to go through the pandemic. Uh, so we now we're in a, in a strong place again after the slow months that we had. So we're really looking forward into into the future and how um, this this whole situation is going to work with Miami and the real estate. The real estate right now, Miami is really strong. People from New York are flying down. They're wanting to invest in Miami, move to Miami, not only because of the tax uh, reasons, but now uh, because of what the city can provide. So we'll, we feel very confident in where we are with, uh, with the sales by the end of the year. Thank you, Maria. Thomas, take us over to that time period there in London and also interest in US real estate, Miami specifically. 
So I remember I visited Scotland in the end of January uh, with a client. We were looking to buy um, a kind of unique trophy asset. And we were there and we were in the airport and they were from Asia. And the story of the virus had spread through Asia. And there was like a question of like, how serious will this be? There was no restrictions at the airport at the time we flew. We'd done the business, we'd come back. Within about four weeks, there was a national lockdown in the UK. Um, you couldn't do any viewings. You couldn't do virtually anything, which lasted, as we know, a couple of months in the UK and was a different all over Europe. And then you become adaptive and you kind of just have to, you can't stop your business just because something external is happening. You have to kind of think outside the box. So we've begun to do a lot via WhatsApp, using the video content we'd collected for different new build development stuff that we couldn't do. Um, usually we'd have to kind of come up with new creative ideas, which we did. We ended up having a pretty notable transaction where we sold a private island uh, just over WhatsApp and WeChat without the client actually visiting uh, the property, which was unique. And then we had a bit of a political scenario in the UK where some changes with visa applications for Hong Kong residents coming into the UK uh, kind of took a big upturn. So we had through Q3 of this year, we had a huge amount of inquiries for people in Asia wanting to buy in London. And then now we've had just had a second lockdown in the UK, which we're in. Um, so literally the last two weeks, we've had a huge amount of inquiries doing more showings and viewings for homes outside of the city with lots of land more sort of what you imagine like country estates maybe for people watching this in the states things that you might find in the hamptons with lots of outside space large square footage so we're doing lots of deals in that area now so this year has been a kind of a year very strange for sure but it's about being adaptive and it's in a, in a weird way i've said this before i think when i was speaking with you before april kind of glad that it's happened because it just shows you how responsive you can be if you put kind of your mind to tweaking your business and now when we go into 2021 which hopefully things will kind of get back to normal as much as possible we kind of feel a bit invincible like there's not really a scenario or kind of an economic affair that can hit us so now hopefully we've got a good trajectory over the next few years that we'll just be onwards and upwards well said thank you thomas maria over to you, what, if any, changes did the pandemic bring about in terms of pricing structure or inventory that you saw specifically? Well, pricing structure, we haven't changed. And actually, what's happening now is that we had people interested back in January, February, um, March, and maybe they didn't went uh, through with the sale. And now they came back. Um, wanting a discount. And that's something that um, at the beginning, I mean, what we're not doing, uh, not, and they still want to buy. So that's something that we've seen a lot, the people that are interested and maybe they want to see if there was an opportunity in pricing, uh, which we're, we're not giving, but they're still interested in moving forward. So that gives us, um, uh, I mean, that makes us feel that the brand is and the building and the way that we're still with the construction, we're actually in the 30th floor right now. Uh, it's the building's going to have 66 floor. So uh, there is a lot of interest in the building and, and people, I, even I think with the pandemic that maybe they didn't want to move forward in the beginning saying, we don't know what's going to happen. And now with everything that, that's that been happening, they say, we want to have a luxury unit in Miami. We want to have our second home in Miami. We want to move to, to downtown Miami. So that's something that we've been seeing. So we haven't had any changes in the payment structure going back to your answer. And the inventory right now, where 60% 60, 60 of the units have been sold. So we're two years and two months away from delivering the units. Um, so we still have 40% 40, 40 to go. Thank you, Maria. Thomas, anything that you saw on your end? So what's interesting about what Maria said is where clients are looking for a discount. Like in London, we call that being cheeky. And yeah. there was a lot of people that would come in low-balling offers um, which unfortunately there are some brokers out there that probably instructed their clients to take it, but it just needed a dose of patience. You need to be resilient. And then we've come back now, we're actually finding some units are selling above ask um, because there's such a huge appetite for it. So I think there's a lot of deals to be done maybe in the commercial real estate space 
which will have a little bit of a longer recovery, but in residential stuff that's off plan, as you know, Maria, when people are buying off plan, they're technically getting a huge discount anyway on what the kind of final phase value will be. And we noticed that in Dubai, there's a lot of clients that are coming to us with stuff that's due to be completed um, Q3, Q4 of 2021, wanting massive discounts. Um, so I think people just thought they would just chance it. But when you're dealing at a certain price point, you don't have a buyer that on day one could afford six, seven, eight million dollars. And then the next day, suddenly their net worth's plummeted that they can only afford four million dollars. We're in a unique space where that might happen with a lower income, but with the type of clients that probably myself and Maria deal with, it's, it's just someone lowballing. So as long as you're strong with it, you can come through it. And now things are getting back to normal. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Thomas. Maria and Thomas, we've, we've all touched on this a little bit um, before, but Maria, beginning with you, what is your biggest personal takeaway been from what you've experienced so far in 2020? Personally? Personally. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm actually in Argentina right now. So the pandemic here was pretty strong, at, especially at the beginning. Now it's uh, a little bit calmer. So personally, I think it was, uh, I travel a lot. So I had to be in grounded and, and it was in Argentina. So um, I think it, it put everything back in perspective, like go back to basics, focus on, on what is important. Uh, and uh, and what, what Thomas was saying before, adaptability. If I have to say something out of the, this whole situation 2020, is uh, being adaptable, uh, being flexible and, and open to new ideas. Um, there's always a market there for different things. And if you're adaptable and, and open, there's, there's a way to go. So I think that's my biggest takeaway. Thank you, Maria. Thomas? I agree a lot. You, I think everyone can relate who watches this is you get a huge, a huge sense of gratitude. Uh, you take advantage of so many things. Last year in 2019, you take so many things for granted. Freedom, the ability to just pick up, jump on a flight from in Europe, it's easier one country to the next, vacation here, a restaurant there, and you just feel like, wow, this is insane. All of this can be ripped away from you at a moment's notice, and you can be left with just like literally nothing. So I've taken a lot of gratitude for the little things, spending more time with the family. Um, but from a business point of view, I've actually surprised myself with how I'm, I'm excited because our model, we're quite boutique, but how tired much larger organizations are they're so you you stand last year would have been in awe of some of the models thinking they're so well structured they're so kind of responsive and then you see a situation like this you see how difficult it is for them to move into new markets and like pivot into new dynamics and, and onboard new clients and so again back to gratitude you just feel so comfortable that you've got a business that can kind of be malleable and like be like water and move into new markets so genuinely as i said it before i feel so confident coming into the new year can't wait to get a proper vacation i was due to actually go to miami i, I agree on that too <laughs> yeah just need a need a real i need a real vacation with restaurants open bars open no face masks <laughs> and then uh, then they'll be happy well miami is, is is quite open so you're welcome to come i'm not in miami right now but you're welcome to go to miami anytime you want i'm nervous about doing the nine hour flight with a face mask on it's, it's oh you to get just... used to it you get used to it fast adaptability like we were saying before <laughs> thomas talk to us about your expansion so how the expansion into the u.s the flagship location, and also from your perspective, why was 2020 the year to do it? Well, 2019 going into 2020 was the year to do it. And then little did I know that someone would eat a bat in Wuhan and I wouldn't be able to do that. But um, so we'd, I'd, I kind of had a decision to make in like February, March, like do I pause everything I'm doing, but I'd already invested a lot of money into the expansion. I'd already committed to it and I was quite reluctant to move the goalpost. So I just decided to run through it, but almost a digital expansion. Um, so we were looking at when I, in 2019, I was in LA, just doing some fact finding, some research, just working out which 
city would be the best kind of place to expand into. Um, I've always been in love with property in America and kind of what the dynamic like is for brokers there. I just think it's like the, the promise that kind of how it is if you're an actor or a musician in the like 80s, 90s, before you want to go to Hollywood, you want to, that was your vision. Like as a, as a real estate professional, you want to get into the US. Like that's, that's very much still the Hollywood in this industry. So the US was the target because it's now a little bit difficult. And with the political landscape that you've got there, I don't know how that will unfold. I think we've just had an expansion with bringing on more listings and more inventory from the US. But I think again, talking about the kind of key theme of being adaptable, I think we made a decision that we're probably going to open our first uh, overseas office in Hong Kong. It feels like with where we are currently positioned in London, um, there's a huge appetite in Hong Kong and across the sort of whole eastern board of Asia for people buying in Europe, buying in the States. And London's perfectly positioned from a time zone point of view to be able to have a conversation. I can have a conversation with you now. I can also have a conversation with LA. I can speak across three or four time zones in one business day. And, that, and that's quite unique for London versus other big cities, maybe New York, a little bit of that. But so Hong Kong, I think, will be our first expansion. Then I'll be back to the US, hopefully sort of middle to sort of third part of um, 2021. And I'd really like to cement, cement a presence there in the States. And I think Miami, South Florida will probably 1000% be our starting point. It feels like the brand is a sexy brand, boutique. It offers something unique. I think it fits in well with the landscape and the type of properties that are available in Miami. So that's that's probably going to be our next venture out. Fantastic. Maria, talking about Miami, back over to Aston Martin Residences. Talk to us about sales over the past several months and what, what your potential buyers are specifically looking for that you're seeing. Okay, so our building has a little bit of for everyone. We have units from one bedroom to five and then our triplex, which is the only uh, triplex penthouse uh, Aston Martin in the world. So it's a, it's a unique uh, unit. It's currently at $50 million and it comes uh, with uh, Vulcan. There are only 24 of those units of those uh, cars built in the world. And this is the only one that has never been driven. So we have a little bit, as I was saying before, a little bit of, uh, of everything. Um, our, currently the, the, the clients that we've been, uh, that come to our building, they usually are looking for second homes or they want to locate in Miami or they live in Miami. Uh, and the average price uh, is around 2.7 million, but we start in 1 million. So um, the buyers, Right now, they're usually uh, from New York. We have buyers from Chicago. Actually, in Europe, uh, Thomas, we, we've been selling very good in Italy and London, and I mean, in UK, in Switzerland also. Uh, and Latin, Amer Latin America and Mexico is one of our leading markets. Um, so that's, that's where we are right now with the, with the sales and the different regions and markets that we're touching at. Thank you, Maria. Talk to us about the vehicle partnership with Aston Martin, the brand, and also I understand the the GVX is arriving. Yeah. Has it arrived? Yes, we're excited. So we have our our units. One of the the particulars of our building is that the the corner units is the O1 line, and that units around three thousand seven hundred square feet, and. Uh, the buyers of that of those units uh, have the opportunity to choose between a DBX or a DB11. It's a limited edition car that Aston Martin designed specifically for the unit owners of the building. So at the beginning, we were uh, offering the DB11, and when Aston Martin announced their first SUV, it was a perfect combination of having the SUV offered for buyers of our building since we have families those are large units and it was a perfect match so we gave the we spoke with uh, Aston Martin and we decided to offer either uh, car to those buyers and we're actually at like in 
10 days, we'll have the first DBX um, in the United States that belongs to a customer. So it will arrive to our, to our sales gallery. We're very excited. And again, it's, there are all limited edition cars designed specifically for the owners of the building. So when you see those cars in the streets, you can tell that that car belongs to the owner of a, of a unit. And we always say that when the brand is such a strong brand, it has more than a hundred years. And it's one of the, the, the brands that's well known in the world. And uh, we always say that we give the opportunity to our clients to be able to drive an Aston Martin car and then live in an Aston Martin home. Uh, so that's something very particular and very proud of that we're doing. Um, so yeah, we're having the DVX. April, you're going to join us, right? When we receive it. I'm ready. Let me know. I'll be here. Maria, our office is actually on just next to Park Lane and we're like, I'm maybe two, 300 meters from the flagship oh, yeah. in London. So, so why, do you think Aston, why do you think okay. Aston Martin chose Miami? Why do you think they chose Miami? Well, you mentioned before uh, that your brand is sexy and that it, it, it marries well with the city. We believe we, Aston Martin, when they saw our location and actually not only Miami, but the location of our building, uh, it was a perfect match between brands, between Aston Martin and G&G, &G, which is a developer. Um, Aston Martin is, well, as I mentioned before, very well known for its design and they were ready for the next step. They wanted to evolve a brand into not only cars, but put the design in something else and what better way to put it in the building. So, uh, and Miami gave that sexy appeal, that new revolutionary, uh, city, cosmopolitan city. And uh, well, we, we got married with, uh, with Master Martin and G&G. It's quite interesting, Miami, because it's kind of going through an evolution. It's, it's like got a new identity. It had this kind of very Hispanic, Latin, fun, dance vibe. It was always about party, 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 Miami. I remember going there five years ago and that was very much the tone. But now it's, it's, it's a serious, not that it wasn't before, but it's like a serious cosmopolitan city that on a global stage, I think people, don't just see as like a vacation anymore. Exactly, and actually before it was more related maybe to Latin Americans, but now within Europe with, and even within the US, uh, Miami is a powerhouse, an economic powerhouse by itself, just as the city and, and the city and the, also the, the state of Florida. But Miami has its um, presence in the arts uh, in December, we have, uh, well, um, you must have known, heard of our Art Basel that we yes. have in Miami. Unfortunately, this year it was canceled. But we, it's, it, that week is a week that the, the, in the entire United States receives more jets from the, entire, from the world. Never an uh, uh, airport receives so many jets like in that week. So that tells you what, um, what the city represents in the world for the arts, for the economic. So yes, we're, that's, that, that's one of the reasons why Aston Martin chose Miami. And also the location of the building, as I mentioned before, when that, when that lot uh, went to sale, there was a bidding war be between different developers. Everybody wanted to buy that land. Developers from Spain, developers from New York, from UK, and G&G &G bought the land. And, and it was one, it went in all the newspapers because it was the highest price paid south of New York. And it's because we're right in downtown and over the, we're in waterfront with a deep water mo marina. So that doesn't happen any other place. Uh, well, you have the opportunity with our building that you can go with a yacht, go, go up to your unit and with your and go down the elevator, get on your yacht, and have dinner in any other place in the Miami River. So, or go to the beach. So that's something that is quite unique. Yeah, it's kind. It's kind of Miami's got like a European feel to it because there's so much water. When you look at somewhere like New York, that's equally on the water, there isn't a dynamic where you go and jump on your boat and there's this like vacation vibe. But if you're coming from Italy, Portugal, Spain, and you're used to having like tapas at the marina you can kind of replicate that in miami which is unique especially for the u.s it's the, the most like 
it's the most European flavored city, I think, that the kind of the whole of the United States has. Yes, and and I and that also with the building, uh, like this, the design that we're having is more European or New York than it is specifically Miami. So that's also one other of the appeals that our buyers have when they come and they see the design. It's more European than anything else. So yeah. Yeah, definitely, I looked at the renderings before, and you see that it's got like a New York flavor to it. It feels. Um, it feels masculine, but without it being like just catered to men. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel it's about what some of the other developments in Miami are, are all white. They're very airy and spacious. And then you get a quite a competitive cluster of different developments. It's difficult to tell which is which. Amenities are similar. Um, but I think the design of this residence is, is completely unique. So yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas, speaking on Miami as a market, as a whole, on a global level, what are your projections looking ahead, let's say over the next three years of a continued influx from the European market, the Asian market? What do you see ahead? Yeah, I think it's going to, you're going to get, and maybe Maria, you'll agree with me, you'll get a one-upmanship on developments. There's probably some developments in the pipeline. And as was the case in Dubai, that Miami's kind of got a very similar feel to Dubai in the sense that there's developers outbidding each other, who can have the best service, who can have the best amenities. Um, but the difference between Dubai and a place like Miami is that the scale of prime real estate is slightly different. My, Dubai can, you can very much go up the coastline, but the further you go up the coastline from a place like Miami, you get into completely different um, smaller cities. You can't have that same price point. You can't hold that. So I think there's going to be a lot of competition for prime real estate. I know that areas like Brickle have blossomed over the last few years. And when I went to um, Miami five years ago, downtown Miami, Brickle, these areas were kind of nothing like they are now, but they've had a kind of complete facelift. Um, I'm interested to see, I'd like to see more, more high rise in Miami because I think the dynamic of really high priced homes, 10, 20, 30, even $50 million that you have these waterfront homes, the square footage can be kind of closely replicated in good penthouses, things like the a duplex, a triplex. And I think more and more buyers are wanting amenities. And what we find in Europe and what works so well in London and in New York is going into kind of serviced accommodation that you have everything. And we've got a couple of developments close to us in London that we, um, our agents for one being the Dorchester collection, uh, another one with the Mandarin Oriental with a partner that we work in London. And people want that high finish um, throughout the whole of the development. So I think over the next three years, more and more developers will come. I think they'll have a, a little mini New York going on where you get the good developments tries to outdo the other development. But I think if there is a breakthrough in aviation, where planes are faster. I know there's a lot of talk about that that could be delivered within the next three to five years, a much faster aircraft. We'll cut that time from Europe to Miami significantly. People think that will have a big impact on uh, New York, but I think it will have a massive effect on South Florida because currently from London, it's nine hours, Central Europe between 10 to 14 hours. If you can cut that down four or five hours, you, you make, the same dynamic as you have with Europe to Dubai, which is anywhere from seven to five hours. So there's some, the future of Miami will be great, but for it to be unbelievable, I think rests on a few kind of innovative advancements. And then I think you could be looking at a major city that has climate, that has culture, that has a business hub. It makes it a, a world beater. Thank you, Thomas. Maria, over to you. Let's talk about financing. What options are available specifically here at Aston Martin Residences for individuals? Well, it's it's good that yes, we we just launched uh, a new and innovative way of uh, buying uh, at Aston Martin Residences uh, because of the the financial um, strength of the developer we were able to work with different with uh, lenders that are offering our buyers to, to buy the units with a financial plan. So you can access uh, a unit at Aston Martin Residences with 15% down and then monthly installments all the way for 22 years. 
so that's something that it's um, again, it's very revolutionary because it's not something that you do uh, that any other developer does in Miami or any other city in, in the US, not with the luxury buildings. Uh, I don't know how it is in UK off, uh, off plan, but in, in Miami, it usually is a payment structure of 15% down, then another 10, 10 until you get to 50%. And then at closing, you pay the 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 other fifty percent through uh, if you want to get a loan through the bank or you or you pay it with your own funds. This way, you have the possibility of only paying fifteen percent down, or it's around between fifteen and seventeen, depending on on how close we are from the from the closing date. So you you pay uh, between let's say between then fifteen and twenty, just to round numbers. And then you pay monthly installments um, until uh, for 22 years, two years until the closing and then 20 more years. That's why we say 22 years that, that the lender is financing. That's, and that's quite unique because in, that happens in the payment structure of like 10, 20, 20, 30 and the rest. And like, these things happen in Dubai quite often and other off plan we've dealt elsewhere in Europe. But that's 15, 85% uh, loan to value. Well, actually, oh, until you unique. pay, it's 70% loan to value because you have to pay the first 30%, 15, 15% or 17. And then for two years until closing, you pay all the rest until you get to 30. And then the loan to value is 70. And uh, in the US, usually for internationals, you don't get, it's difficult to get a, a loan uh, for more than 50%. Uh, so this is something uh, new and, and something um, specifically designed also for international buyers. Yeah, because that's quite difficult, isn't it? So it's some of the, the kind of, that's a, that's a really interesting, actually. That's a great yeah. selling. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's very, it's, it's, it's amazing. And we, we just launched right now. So it's, we're in the process of communicating this. Great, great. program. We, we will have to speak after, Maria. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Thomas, looking ahead, coming out of 2020, moving into 2021, what are your projections ahead? I think with this, this really news of a vaccine coming into the UK. Um... Oh, we oh. lost. We lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'll be back. Maria, over to you. Looking ahead, coming out of 2020, moving into 2021. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Ask again. I was looking for him if he was here. Can you ask the question again? Oh, oh, so, moving through 2020 into 2021, mm -hmm. what are your projections ahead? And Thomas was speaking on, you know, the vaccine, the vaccine coming into. Yes, yes. So hopefully with the vaccine uh, in the near future, and I, the hopefully is a very strong letters, <laughs> very large letters. Um, I think slowly we're gonna get back to, to normal. People are gonna start traveling again. Um, we already see that a bit more in the US. People, especially from New York to Miami are traveling, but I think uh, moving towards 2021, um, there are some things that are going to stay, uh, like we're going to incorporate these Zoom meetings and, and Zoom calls and not always having to fly for certain meetings. I think that's something that is going to change. We're going to be more selective on, on what it is. Hi, Thomas. We Good lost you. you. Thomas, we'll go over to you next. We had a technical issue. We lost you there. Glad you were able to join again. So I, I got your question, Thomas. I'm, I'm, I'm answering for you. So, um, so I think that there are certain things that are gonna stay for sure, like uh, not always traveling for, for meetings and we're gonna, we're gonna incorporate the Zoom meetings much more and we're gonna be more selective of what it is that we're gonna uh, fly for or we're gonna uh, have to be. Um, and then I think I'm very, I'm, Usually, I'm a very positive person. So I think this would, whatever it brings and, and changes, it will be something that we choose for the better. Uh, and uh, so I'm very positive for what 2021 is going to bring. Thank you, Maria. 
Thomas, we're going to go back over to you. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, hopefully, I don't repeat anything you've said, Maria, because I can't. I didn't catch it, but um, feel free to keep copying me. No, no worries. Okay. That's why I come off just to see what you <laughs> would say. <laughs> So, um, yeah, in terms of 2021, I, I think, like, let's say, let's take this for example, like maybe a year ago, this is a different panel discussion and it's live and it's face to face. So the great news about it is that we can have a conversation now very comfortably, very normal. There's nothing abnormal about what we're doing now. And we can be in different time zones, different locations. So that will ultimately bring more people together. I think... And I was having a conversation with a client the other day and I said, I feel this feels like a wildfire, you know, when there's like absolute devastation, but then it kind of refertilizes the soil and then newer plants grow through. And I feel that's what's going to happen with business. And it's a huge opportunity for smaller companies that can survive through this to kind of really have a level playing field. I think this type of scenario kind of levels the whole playing field for everyone from a big corporate conglomerate down to a kind of small like mum and pup kind of store that's run and now everyone's got a much clearer structure to build from so I think that's going to be really exciting and I think we'll see maybe over the next two years a lot of innovation come out a lot of people use QR codes people thought the QR code was dead and now it's had a big revolution we use it in everyday life again so there's going to be lots of things that we do differently um, I think the way we travel the way we eat the way we socialize might stay different for a little while but as with any kind of revolution um new things start uh, sorry new things start and older kind of habits die so i think it will just be a, a new world that we live in and we will become accustomed to it the same way we ha had the kind of before the lockdown and we'll just be in a different way of doing business and humans generically are kind of very adaptable so come a year or two we will just be business as usual in the life that we live well then thank you thomas Maria and Thomas, you know, we did have a great tasting with the winter um, that led into this great real estate panel today, continuing the British heritage with Thomas, of course. Maria, talking about Bollinger's partnership with 007, what amenity do you think James Bond would have enjoyed the most here at Aston Martin Residences, Miami? Well, I can imagine James Bond having his volunteer in our art, ga art gallery. We have an art gallery um, in one of our high floors. We have four floors of amenities from the 52nd to the 55th. So I can see him uh, having a drink there, enjoying art and enjoying the, the skyline in Miami and, and the view. And actually I can, I, I can go even further and say at sunset that you can, you can actually it's an amazing view. So I can imagine that easily. <laughs> Thank you. Thomas, over to you. What do you think 007 James Bond would have enjoyed the most about Miami as a whole? Well, I've, I've, I've channeled my inner James Bond today with my attire. So I hopefully he, he would be proud of how I'm dressed. I've actually got my bottle of Bollinger as well. <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting in the spirit. I think what James Bond would undoubtedly enjoy the most is the lifestyle um, of the evening. I'm sure there's a lot of company that he would have kept <laughs> that he would have enjoyed. Um, I could imagine James Bond pulling up on a, a luxury yacht, pulling up to the residences, into the marina, um, shades on, t-shirt, with a gun in his back pocket. So that's how I think James would have enjoyed the residences in Miami. Well, let me add something. I can imagine him from the art gallery going with a parachute to the yacht. Let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> you should be careful what you encourage. You might find a client does the same. That's true. <laughs> brand heritage, generational brands, um, icon status. It's, it's great to see the partnership of Aston Martin residences here in Miami, um, Maria. And also, Thomas, over to you, the generational component of everything that you're doing and everything that you're bringing here to the U.S. We're obviously looking forward to having you here in Miami. I um, can't wait. I'm not usually this pale, but I haven't been outside for six months. <laughs> it's, a, it's been a real pleasure to have both of you with us today and to round out this tasting together with Bollinger. So thank you so much for your insight into our market here in Miami and, and continuing all the great work and, you know, looking forward to continue Great work together. Thank you both. Amazing. Thomas. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Rolls.
Take care. Have a great evening. I'm looking forward to seeing you, Thomas. See you soon. Bye-bye.